Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Project Build, where we turn this boring wall here into a standout feature wall. Now, for some reason, I lost all the footage of me actually measuring uh, angles and distances on the wall, but essentially, um, to match up with the skirting board, I needed to cut one edge of the skirting board here at a 22.5 degree angle. Um, that's going to give us a nice flush fit at the bottom, which will make sense in a minute. Quite a few of those to cut. Um, but once finished, I needed to move it now back to a zero degree angle here so that we have a nice straight 90 degree uh, edge on the top corner. So you'll see me measuring here. Um, I cut all of these skirting boards to, I believe it was 2.4 meters um, or around there anyways. You'll see in a minute that is going to change unfortunately we had a little bit of a mishap later on after cutting all 11 strips here I've got one end with a 22.5 degree bevel and the other end up here at a perfect zero degree or 90 degree I suppose in some cases and basically it's going to make a nice slat wall where the bottom is flush with the skirting board trying to do this one handed with a camera never an easy job there we go and up top I want to give us a couple of mils spare there uh, for expansion and contraction and that'll be filled in anyways with uh, a little bit of gap filler at the end. This is what I'm talking about. So after I cut all the lengths, um, you'll see it's nice, it fits nicely down the other end. And down uh, this end of the wall, I'll flush it up at the bottom. And there you go, one handed again. Flush it up at the bottom. And have a look at the top. Yeah. Definitely not square. So, essentially, I'm not sure whether it's the uh, baseboards or the architraves that's not straight, but one side is much shorter than the other, which means that I need to cut every single one of these again, and I need to measure every single one individually and cut it individually and mark them, label them, whatever, to make sure that they go into their spot. So that's what I'm going to do here. Basically flushing up the bottom. And then just scribing up the top where I need to cut. And so there's no more mistakes. Label it for this one, number five. It's gonna be the fifth one along. Basically I need to do that for all 11 pieces now and then recut them all yet again.
after we cut all those 11, I'm just going, going ahead now and essentially just spacing out on the wall where each slat is going to go. Um, just marking them evenly spaced across and then I'm going to get a laser out. And here we go with the laser that I was mentioning. So with the laser, I'm just lining up with the two marks that I put. I put a mark up the top of the wall and at the bottom and just making sure that they are in line and straight. This line is what I'm going to line then the edge of each slat with. Um, to attach, I'm using some instant nails, right, or liquid nails uh, for some of you, um, and then where needed, a couple of brad nails just to tack it in as a bit of a mechanical fix. Uh, but the liquid nails is really going to do majority of the job. Right, so I'm just going to speed this up here a little bit for you. But essentially, all I'm doing, putting a nice thick bead there of liquid nails down the whole piece. Um, making sure that, that one side of it lines up with the uh, laser and then a couple of tacks. There we have it, all 11 liquid nailed in or tacked in or both, um, but as we can see, majority of them nice and tight to the wall, which is great. There's a couple of sections like right there and right in the corner here um, that are quite large gaps and that's because, as we can see, it's pretty much tight at the bottom, um, but the wall's not straight. It's tight at the bottom there, thick in the middle. Um, big gap there and tight again at the top so that's just going to have to be filled in with a bit of filler um, and the other gap I was mentioning is just about here where the wall actually bows in you get a better shot of it here as well so better shot of it there but overall for the most part it's coming along nicely and it's going to look a heck of a lot better once all these gaps are filled in. Nice and tight and flush with the baseboard. Basically, next step now, hide all the crimes, fill in those voids, no more gaps, right? In a white colour, so it's going to be easier to sort of paint afterwards. Uh, perfect for skirting boards, as it says here, even though I'm putting them on a wall. Um, I wanted something that was a bit more flexible with low shrinkage, that way um, it's not going to crack over time.
a bit of a spray, some detergent. It's going to make the finger here slide a lot nicer down. You get a much nicer finish if you have a bit of detergent water to it. I've just done this one inside strip here and as you can see already, huge improvement, right? I'll give you a little um, comparison with the one next to it. So before and after. Yeah, can't even tell there was any gap there. Once painted, oh, it's going to come up. Amazing. I'm just going to work my way along now, filling in all the other gaps um, across all pieces. And then we'll come back in a little bit and I'll show you the finished uh, product before paint. go so this is prior to paint but post uh, filling all these gaps if you remember the, the big gaps in the wall and along the edges um, prior they're all gone now and waited half an hour and now it's ready for a sand it's gonna take me a while I'm not gonna film it because I need to get in all these cre crevices left right sideways top bottom everywhere Once that's all done, um, next step will be essentially paint, which down here I've got a big tub of Wash & Wear Dulux. So the Wash & Wear Dulux here uh, is going to withstand sort of any spills and it's easier to clean. I've got it in a white on white colour. So yes, the room will be staying white. Give it a after sanding, wipe down with sugar soap. And we'll be basically good to go. So, three, two, one. Hey, there we go. Fully painted. How awesome does this look? For a nice, quick, easy job that only required a few lengths of skirting board, some paint, right, a couple of tubes of liquid nails, and some gap filler. And you get a result like this. Thanks guys for watching another episode of the project build. I'm trying to post when I can, where I can. Uh, there's heaps of jobs still coming around the house, uh, including in the shed. So if you want to see any of those, please drop a like, subscribe. Thanks for watching.